Hey everyone, Laszlo Montgomery here. 2024 is off and running, and as you notice, due to other distracting, but alas, more lucrative obligations, the amount of CHP programs released on this tired old RSS feed has diminished substantially. And for this, I hope no one's holding me in too much contempt. So while Emma and I are on hiatus in between seasons of the Chinese Sayings podcast, I wanted to re-release an old CSP episode that ranks among my top personal favorites since the CSP was launched back in November 2016. But rather than upload the old MP3 file, I'm re-recording it for you in my 2024 voice. This one was originally released in March 2017, a good seven years ago. And I don't know about all y'alls, but I'm not half the man I used to be. And there's this shadow hanging over me. So I dredge this one up from a dark corner of the back catalog. And I hope you'll enjoy this one if you never heard it before. And if you heard it already, all I could say is one more listen isn't going to hurt you. Since I got you here, let me announce that we're taking requests from the bandstand. And for season nine, we're going to cover listener requests. So if you have any favorite Chung Yus that you wouldn't mind being featured on the CSP... Drop me a line via social media or at laszlo at teacup.media. And if we run with it in season nine, you can bet we'll mention your name. And millions of people around the world taking in this episode will applaud you. Okay, I always love this Chinese saying, Lan Yu Chong Shu. It rolls off the tongue quite nicely, nicely, Johnson. What I particularly dig about this four-character idiom is the story behind it. The whole idea about the kind of person this idiom describes just hits the nail on the head. Lan Yu Chong Shu. Let me dissect it for you without further ado. The first character, Lan, means to overflow, excessive, and in this Chong Yu, it means indiscriminate. A Yu, it's a kind of ancient Chinese woodwind instrument with multiple bamboo pipes all attached together. And if you know your classical Chinese musical instruments, it's kind of similar to a sheng. And the fourth character is shu, which means number or amount. And what we're left with is lan yu chong shu, indiscriminate yu sufficient number. Who in the world knows what that means? Well, I'll tell you, anyone who knows their han fades, so that's who. This cheng yu comes from that great classic of legalist philosophy. And in the chapter called Nei Chu Shuo Shang, Master Han Fei gives us today's useful Cheng Yu. Like so many great Chinese sayings, the story behind this Cheng Yu takes place in the state of Qi. Qi was located where Shandong province is today, with its capital at Linzi, present-day Zibo. I've been there, but I didn't know it was the capital of Qi when I was there on business. Our royal star of this story is the king of Qi, Qi Xuan Wang. He reigned 319 to 301 BC, and among other things you could say about King Xuan was that he was a great lover of music. He particularly loved the Yu, and King Xuan's royal ensemble, no kidding, had something like 300 Yu players. Yeah, King Xuan liked nothing more than for the entire Yu ensemble to play their instruments together as an orchestra at one time. And it wasn't like today with so many freelance musicians having to sing for their supper. These Yu musicians got paid well, and whenever King Xuan called on them to perform, they got to enjoy a nice meal at the palace, and well, the portions were quite generous. So it was a nice, steady, well-paying gig with perks. The dream of many a musician and artist, not just today, back then too. And getting top billing in this story was this lovable loser named Mr. Nan Guo, yeah, one of those Fu Xing, or two-character surnames. Eh, not rare, but you don't meet him every day. There were two things Mr. Nan Guo enjoyed doing. Bumming a free meal off someone, and loafing on the job. He was a low-level guy who worked at the palace. In Hong Kong, eh, this would have been akin to a kind of assault kind of a worker, like an old handyman or messenger. Somehow he got wind of the sweet deal these musicians had playing the Yu for King Xuan at the royal palace. 
and looking to get a piece of that action, Mr. Nanguo remembered he actually had this old yu at his house that had been handed down for generations. So we went and retrieved it from storage, dusted it off, and with all those free meals and generous pay beckoning him, he was able to get an audience with the palace musical director who interviewed him and agreed to advocate on his behalf to King Shen. And the king, of course, said, you know, the more the merrier. So Mr. Nanguo, in no time at all, sat with all the other 300 Yu musicians and for several years played in that orchestra. The only thing was that Mr. Nanguo had no idea how to play the Yu. Never took a lesson in his life. He'd just go through the motions and sway with the other musicians and pretend like he was blowing his instrument and totally getting into it. He was one single musician amidst an ensemble of 300. No one could tell that he was just going through the motions and not actually doing anything. 300 musicians all blowing into their U at once? Well, if one of them didn't have any sound coming out of it, who's going to know? Well... After several years of living off the fat of the land, Mr. Nanquo's gig came to an ignoble end. One day, in 301 BC, his luck ran out when King Shen died. His son became the new king of Qi. This was the infamous King Min, Qi Min Wang, a king so bad he brought down the whole state of Qi. But that's another story. King Min, he liked music too, and when his ministers arranged a little impromptu performance for the new king, all 300 players of this all you orchestra started playing. But moments into their performance, King Min shook his head and said, That's not what I want to hear. I much prefer soloists. Let me hear a you recital with just one single musician at a time. Mr. Nanguo heard this, and his heart started pounding, and he knew this gravy train was leaving the station, and he had to get off. So as the king selected members of the orchestra to each perform a solo, Mr. Nanguo slipped out the back door and exited the music business. So this Mr. Nanguo, he was a Lan Yu, a Yu player indiscriminately chosen for no particular reason other than he owned his own instrument. And he was selected to Chong Shu to make up the necessary number required. So anyone who obviously has no talent but joins the team and poses as a somebody of talent but was actually chosen because you just needed a right fielder, they're a Lan Yu Chong Shu. You'd say this in a mocking, derisive kind of a way. When you say someone is pulling a Lan Yu Chong Shu, there's someone with Little or no talent, but they were allowed to join the band or the team just to fill up the required number of musicians. Lan Yu Chong Shu. The person could be anyone, not just a musician. People in the office, your general manager, workers who come to fix your appliances or your car, your lawyer, your financial advisor. Anyone who isn't half as good as they make themselves out to be, you could call them a Lan Yu Chong Shu. Nobody special, just someone used indiscriminately to do something because you needed something done. And another thing, this Cheng Yu has a secondary use. And, well, may I humbly admit, I've used it myself once or twice over the years. Let's say you are an expert. You're someone like David Moser who plays an instrument like a virtuoso, or you're a fabulous public speaker or scientist, and people call you out and recognize your outstanding virtues. Well, in a self-deprecating way, you can just you know, wave them off and call yourself a Lan Yu Chong Shu. Eh, I'm just an imposter. So don't forget, you can use it that way as well to express humility or modesty. So, there it is. That's the story of King Shen of Qi, personal friend of Meng Zi, I didn't mention. He loved music in more of a quantitative way rather than qualitatively. And his son, who brought down the house in 284 BC, the wicked King Min, who, because he only enjoyed listening to Yu solos, he brought a quick end to the lazy poser Nan Guo Xiansheng, Mr. Nan Guo, Lan Yu Chong Shu, to be selected to play the Yu just to make up the required number. No one of talent. If ten Orthodox Jews want to go pray and there's only nine of them present, well, they need one more to 
Chong Shu to make up the required ten to make up the minion. That tenth Jew? It didn't matter if he never went to Shul or even believed in God. He was a Lan Yu Chong Shu, someone indiscriminately chosen just to make up the required number. So, Lan Yu Chong Shu. You could say that about yourself, but don't catch anyone else saying that about you. All right, that's all, folks. Remember to send in all your Chung Yu suggestions, and if it gets chosen as part of the Season 9 lineup, we'll immortalize you in the episode with a mention. Okay, come see me in London. I'll be there January 28th to February 4, a guest of the famous London Science Museum. I'm in town for the opening of Ziming Zhong Ning Shi Ju Zheng, Clockwork Treasures from China's Forbidden City Exhibition. I can taste that full English already. Okay, that's all I got for you. Thanks for listening, and I do hope you'll consider coming back next time for another exciting episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.